Hi. So we're here at the Embedded World 2024. So please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Callista Redman, CEO of Risk Five International. So what's the latest with Risk Five? How how big is it growing, and how big is it right now? Well, we currently have more than 2,300 members in 70 countries around the world. So we're continuing to grow, grow tremendously. We're seeing such a huge appetite for Risk Five that allows you to have that freedom of design. So, you know, around the world, like about a third North America, a third Europe, and a third in APAC. And together, we collaborate on so many different specifications and standards. In fact, we just issued a press release saying that we've done 40 in just the last two years. 40 standards. 40 specifications, right. Specifications. Yes. And so these are base building blocks that together with the base ISA, you add on those extensions that you need for your design. Maybe you're looking for power or for efficiency or vector or some kind of virtualization. Uh, those are the types of attributes that you can ascribe through these extensions. Is there things they can uh, suggest and, and create that it's unique because of RISC-V that is not possible to create with the other architectures? Yes, yeah, so you know when it comes to AI and ML and any type of acceleration, RISC-V has a very uh, clean, neat, small base ISA. Just the simplicity of adding only the extensions you need rather than being burdened with all the stuff that you may or may not need. Plus, you have reserved encoding space. That allows you to bring in your proprietary or differentiation. And uh, how about um, the, like the real chips, the hardware RISC-V, how big does it get so far? And how, how much, uh, like how big are the chips? You know, like yeah, how much there's performance? A, there's a huge variety. In fact, the cool thing about RISC-V is it is not relegated to the very smallest lightweight or the highest performance with thousands of cores, but you have that entire spectrum of uh, innovations that have been coming to market. But the big chips are shipping? I, you know, there's a variety that are shipping, a variety that are in production. I don't have the, you know, the exact specifics on what is the, you know, volume at different sizes. You know, the, the neat thing about RISC-V is that it is a global standard. As a standard, we don't have licenses with each individual uh, innovator. So we don't have a tracking mechanism to say with precision, here's how many of these are shipping. And they today. can do what they want. Everybody can do what they want. There is freedom of design to innovate as you wish. They don't need to ask for permission. They don't ask for permission. So uh, let's say China is very excited with RISC-V, right? Yes. And there's a lot of stuff happening in China? There's a lot of stuff happening in China. Now, the key thing here is to understand that as a standard, we don't dictate what is uh, on either end of that standard. So it's like USB. USB is, is used as an interconnect point between hardware. HTTP, a standard. It doesn't drive what, the, what is on either side of that. So RISC-V is a standard. We don't have jurisdiction over what that implementation is. We don't have no idea what the implementation is. And there's no licensing fee. There's no licensing fee. But people can be members and, and support like the membership system? So becoming a member of RISC-V is really important because that enables your engineers to work shoulder to shoulder with the best minds in the industry. And that allows you to bring that knowledge back into your organization to accelerate your own roadmap, as well as to build your partnerships, find areas where you're duplicating work that's going on elsewhere in the community, because that collaboration reduces duplication, accelerates your development to allow you to work on higher value. Uh, and there's a different levels of membership, I guess? And, uh... There are like three. There's community level that's free for organizations like uh, academic institutions. There's strategic, basic membership, different uh, sizes for different size organizations. So you pay depending on how big you are. What kind of, uh, can you say and shortly, premier. the price of the different ones, or is so, that fixed? Yeah, everything is, yeah, it's fixed and everything is up on the website. All right. Cool, okay, thanks a lot. So the Embedded World is a big deal, right? It's, it's great, you know, we've been coming here for a long time and it's really quite a treat to see everyone. Sometimes it's like a family reunion. In fact, what's exciting about Embedded World is you go around to different booths. Even AMD, right next door, they have a RISC-V 
uh, soft demonstration. Yeah. Yeah. Going on, on their FPGA. Site. Yeah. yeah. You you walk around the embedded world booth today, and or not the booth, the show, right? And you see Risk Five everywhere. I even saw a Risk Five laptop. That's a company says you should not buy it. It's a strange marketing. I saw that uh, recently. And then there's an. Um, is there stuff happening for servers or automotive? So you see a lot of activity going on in uh, data centers and getting to enterprise grade. That stuff takes time. We are working on both the hardware and the software ecosystem in parallel. Is there any way to be uh, compatible with ARM? Uh, you know, there's a lot of similarities between ARM and RISC-V, and many folks are finding it very easy to be uh, portable across both. Because that helps if you don't have to recompile the whole thing, exactly. but yeah. if there's some kind of way to process automatically? Understanding the basic risk architectures is very easy to make your workload work for both ARM and for RISC-V. And a lot of the software applications are finding that that port and optimization is not nearly as arduous as they would have imagined. Do you think RISC-V is going to power smartphones? Absolutely.